Uh, I'm saying this video is all about rain screen, and then you say, I scream, you scream, we all scream for rain screen. <laughs> mm, yeah, it takes a little long to say, but you can try it. I think you should. I think it's like. What? This video is all about rain screen. And we're gonna share what rain screen is, why we're installing it, and how to install it. There's a number of ways rain screen can be accomplished on a house. Traditionally, it's just vertical wooden furring strips, but there are better methods and ones that are easier to install too. So this is Benjamin Obdike's Slicker Max product. It is a netted vertical channel mat with a piece of fabric, like filter fabric on top of it. This basically allows an airspace behind the exterior cladding. In our case, we have a number of them, including stone veneer, fiber cement, vinyl, and PVC sheet. So having this airspace isn't as critical for something like vinyl, it's a pretty well ventilated cladding, but for fiber cement and stone veneer, it's definitely recommended and actually required for something like stone veneer. It essentially allows an airspace behind the siding that both water can drain down if any incidental moisture gets in or air can rise up and dry the back of the siding. It will help our paint finish on our James Hardy and any other painted products we have on the wall last much, much longer when they can dry out. First, I wanna snap a chalk line so that we can have a good guide for the top edge as we unroll it and staple it. The rolls are 39 inches long, so I'm gonna measure 39 inches up from the bottom of my sheathing, make a little mark there, do the same thing over here. Special thanks to Benjamin Obdyk for supporting this project. We knew from the start a rain screen was a non-negotiable for the build and we found their products and tech support to Good. be really yeah. top quality. Ooh, right on the money. All right, let's get that first one up. Just hold it up a little bit. Oh, you're gonna actually staple I'm gonna, it first. I'm gonna staple it to the wall. I would just put your foot up like that and just hold it with your foot. There you go. It's gonna work. <laughs> Crappy thing. Is it coming out? No. Hammer stapler is no good, off to old reliable. Hopefully, don't speak too soon. Can you just focus on holding it up at the right thing and I'll focus on stapling it? I think I'm gonna unroll it until I can put it on here. Hmm, I wonder if this is gonna be too low. Maybe we should just go slightly above our Yeah, I line. think we should go up a little bit. I think I'm gonna pop it up to like 40. I think that should do the trick. We'll chalk another line here. Second time is the charm. It's rolled in tighter. Oh. That's good. Okay, we won't staple the bottom yet. So you can kind of get a sense of it as you're putting it up, how much compression resistance it has. Like at pinpoints, sure, you can, you can put your finger into it a little bit, but if you try to push it into it with your whole hand, it is like basically just as solid as the wall. I'm just gonna go about every 16 on center. Cool, it looks so, so good. So is this in place of like the normal Crap. No. Screen. What is that? That's a water, a WRB, water resistive barrier. Which is the same as the, the green zip stuff. Is on our the zip. WRB. Okay. That's nice that you can use a utility knife. Let's talk about this bottom flap now. This is just four inches of extra fabric. At the very bottom layer, what we're going to do is tuck this back up underneath. And this essentially closes off our rain screen to any bugs that might want to crawl up in there. We're going to do this all the way around at all the bottom courses. And then as we go up, this will simply just lap over the top course and we'll staple that flap right down to it. Tucks up there really nicely. You fixed it. Teamwork I makes the dream work. From my dad's, from his building. When he did, when he did the house wrap. The when they work, they work like a champ. Yeah, seriously, it makes things go a lot quicker. For the stapling, I'm using half inch staples because the matting is about a quarter inch thick and I'm trying to get a little bit of penetration into the wall. And there's the hammer stapler or the regular stapler. And we've used both. And this is what I've found, that the hammer stapler kind of leaves a divot and it sort of locally compresses the material in that area. Not a huge fan of that because it's kind of like closing off of one of the rain screens. So if I have the choice, I'm going to use the regular stapler, which just sort of sinks the staple pretty much flush with the material itself. So I think we're just gonna use regular stapler for the rest of the install. Our faithful friend Shane is here on site for a few hours today helping us out as he has plenty of times in the past. Right now he's marking all our stud locations because once we unroll this, we won't be able to see the nail holes in the zip anymore. 
and we're not gonna know where to put screws into our siding. Our vinyl siding is gonna actually be screwed on instead of nailed on so that it can more easily be removed because this is the south side of the house which we anticipate doing a future large addition onto. So that's why this side is vinyl, all the rest is fiber cement, stone veneer, and PVC. Drainage plane behind cladding like our stone veneer is actually code required because of how much moisture that masonry can absorb and drive into the wall. The fabric on the Slicker Max makes sure the mortar cannot block those drainage cavities. The front elevation will get both stone veneer and half inch PVC sheet with 1x3 PVC batten strips. Similar to the vinyl lap on the south elevation, it's not absolutely critical this gets ventilation behind it, but the benefits far outweigh the cost in guarding against moisture damage and lowering the temperature of the sheathing. I also found it makes an excellent furring strip. Below this head flashing, I was planning to use a piece of one inch thick PVC to provide backing for the decorative trim that will be fastened on top, but I realized instead I could use a scrap piece of slicker and a three quarter inch PVC strip, which both saved some money and added ventilation behind the trim. I definitely prefer the flat stapler rather than the hammer tacker to put this stuff on because you can kind of use the stapler to smooth it out right before you put the staple in it just leaves a flatter surface, I think. Siding starts at 8 a.m. tomorrow, and here we are rolling out Slicker Max, trying to get part of this wall done because this is the first wall we want them to start on. With just a few courses of siding up, this is like the perfect time to demonstrate how this actually works. We've got our slicker max behind our fiber cement, and then we have this transition flashing down here, which is gonna kick the water out of the wall assembly and over top of our stone veneer. So I have my hose here. I just wanna demonstrate this. I'm gonna try to get it right up next to the wall so all of the water flow is like down the wall and none of it comes over the siding. And then just check out what happens at the bottom. This is what's gonna happen in real life too, and this is the beauty of the rain screen. So I'm just trickling water through here now. If it was just like a rain, you know, rain coming down the window and check that out. Oh, I'm failing, hold on. I got some over top of the siding. Can you see the water flowing down and through the channels? Mm -hmm. That rain screen allows all this water to come down behind the siding and it gives an airspace on the back side to dry this out. This is gonna make the paint finish on our James Hardy last a lot longer without it absorbing any water really, it's gonna be able to dry excellently. Before we cover this up completely with siding, let's talk about the top of wall detail we got going on here for the slicker. We've got our top furring strip here, which our freeze board, our one by six freeze board will attach to, and we're holding the slicker back about a half inch or so from that. And the top of the hardy, we're also holding back a little bit. So our top strip here, there's, there's probably close to a half inch, maybe seven sixteenths or something there. That airspace should allow any moisture or air traveling up the channels to have a place to escape. Up and out, it will have to come down underneath the freeze board, which will overlap all this and hide the, the top um, of our siding here. But I thought that would be a good idea just to have that little bit of airspace in there. While rain screens or air gaps between the siding and sheathing are most known for moisture management, hence the term rain screen, a huge secondary benefit is a thermal break. That same air gap is a great little layer of insulation, air being the best insulator really you can have on a building. So any heat that's incoming to the siding surface has to make it through that air gap before it's transmitted to the sheathing, which then of course you have your interior insulation and then your interior living space. So I'm not sure how much insulation value exactly Slicker Max would add, but it's definitely going to help on this south facing wall. This is in full sun almost all day and this whole gable end is exposed to our interior living space on the indoor. That's really it for rain screen details. We're gonna keep moving up this wall the rest of today. Special thanks to Benjamin Obdyke for making a fantastic product in Slicker Max and answering all of my detailed technical questions when it came to planning out the install with all the various types of exterior cladding we have. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you on the next one. Why we're installing it and how to install it. You didn't sound very excited. I didn't? No. Woo! Exactly. Get pumped. Get Rain pumped. screen. You should be excited about this. It's okay. going to save you from painting that siding. How we're installing it and why we're installing it. So in the words of Matt Reisinger, maker of the build show, let's get going. Can you do that? Don't steal his thunder. We got to clip that and send that to Matt. <laughs>